Welcome participants. Now we are moving to lecture number 2 in week 3. Today the topic of this lecture is double flat beds. So, in this particular lecture we are going to learn about another aspect of weft knitting technologies which is related to double flat bed knitting machines. Before we move further, now we need to first understand why there was a need to have double flat bed knitting technologies. So, in the last lecture, I introduced you a new topic related to knitting which was fabric curling. I demonstrated you how a single jersey fabric which is usually produced by single bed machines used to curls from the edges and the nature of curling is highly complicated. So, if you see the loop configuration here, the fabric along the veil line, the loop tried to bend from front to back and along the course line, the loops try to bend from back to front. So, in last lecture, we tried to understand why this phenomena was happening, especially in case of single jersey fabrics because these type of fabric curling creates a lot of problems in fabric handling, especially sieving, garmenting, cutting. So, there is always a kind of problem which you will face while working with single jersey fabrics. So, in last week, we tried to understand why this curling was happening. To understand this, we um, try to analyze the projection of these type of loops on three different planes. So, x z plane, x y plane, and yz plane and we noticed usually the yarn which is generally in a straight segment. So, if you take any yarn, it is usually in a straight segment, but once it is there inside the fabric, the nature of yarn is in highly bent state. So, you can see here in xy plane, the yarn is bent in the form of loop. In yz plane also, it is bent in certain fashions. So, naturally, if this yarn is elastic, it will always try to bend and go back to its straight position. So, we try to take the projection of these loops in all different planes and we understood how across different edges, it has different nature of curling. So, this is what we covered in the last lecture. Apart from that, we categorized two different types of fabric. One was single jersey fabric which I just introduced you which is usually made on single bed machine. In a single jersey fabrics, you can either see technical back loop on one side of the surface and if you flip that surface, you will see technical front side and you can see how difficult it is to work with single jersey fabric. So, the moment you relax this fabric, it will try to curl from the edges. To overcome this problem, a new kind of fabrics was introduced usually which is called double jersey fabrics and the nature of double jersey fabric is much more stable. It does not curl from the edges and the idea for double jersey fabric not to curl from the edges lies in its structure. So, if you see double jersey fabrics in the same course, you can find technical back as well as technical front loops. And because of having technical back and front loops on the same side of the fabrics, the curling nature is counteract. So, if let us suppose technical back loops try to move in anti-clockwise direction, naturally that will be countered by technical front loops which will have counter direction movement. So, in this way, the nature of curling is solved in case of double jersey fabric. But to create double jersey fabrics, we need to have double bed machines and this is how a new kind of technologies was introduced in knitting which is related to double bed machines. So, in this particular lecture, we are going to focus more on double bed machines. The first thing what you can expect from this lecture is what is the principle to create double jersey fabric? Then we are going to understand the double flat bed machines, especially the V bed machine which is the most popular one in knitting technologies. In the V bed machine, we will try to understand how the beds operate, how the needles are placed. Also, we will look at the profile of the cams which is there for the reciprocative movements of needles. Apart from that, in double bed machines, we will also cover a new kind of machines which is pearl knitting machines. 
So the idea of understanding or looking to these machines is how we can create a double jersey fabrics with double beds machines. So let's move to the first part. What is the principle behind creating double jersey fabrics? So first of all, double jersey fabrics can only be created by a double bed machine. To understand this, if you will see the nature of a single flat bed, it can only produce technical back or front loops on the surface. So this surface which you are looking at, it is only consists of head and sinker part. So naturally this symbol indicates technical back side. So in technical back sides, all loops which is denoted here in blue segments are going behind the red loops. So it is being formed on the back side of the loop. So if you see the nature of movement of each individual needle of this particular single bed, the nature of movement will be like this. So it comes out, take the yarn and goes back inside the bed. So if you are watching in front of the machine, what you will observe that it is catching the yarn and it is making the loop on the back side. Okay? Since all the needles which is placed on this particular bed has the same nature of movement. So all the loops which is created by each single needle will have same nature. Either it will be technical back if you are watching from this side or if you are watching from the opposite side, let us suppose on this side, it will be having technical front. So due to the nature of placement of needles on a single bed, single bed can only produce one type of loops on the surface and such fabrics are called single jersey fabrics. But if you see a double jersey fabrics, the most important difference between a double jersey fabric is it is having both technical front and back loops on the same side as well. So if you see the first course, you can see technical back as well as technical front is being formed simultaneously. So for example, if you see the nature of yarn movement here, so the first column loops, the blue one, it is being formed on the back side. After that, in the second column, this loop is being formed on the front side. So the yarn is same, which is providing yarns to each column along the course, but the nature of loop formation is different. So the first column is technical back, the second column is technical front, again technical back and then technical front. So along the course, back, front, back, front. So in this way, you are creating all set of loops on the same surface. So to create technical back and technical front using a single bed, it will be impossible because if you look at one bed, the nature of needles on that particular bed will remain same. So either it will create technical back loop. So for example, if you see the blue one, this first column and third column, these two loops will be formed by same type of bed having same type of needle movement. To create these two loops, naturally the position of this bed has to be in opposite direction. Opposite in the sense, the needles should be doing exactly opposite movement of what the first bed is doing right now. So to create front loops, the positioning of bed has to be exactly opposite. Okay? So in this way, you can create technical front loops. So to have technical back and front loop along the same course, some loops has to be created on this bed in which the needle is moving from left to right and then right to left. And then some loops has to be created on this bed where the needle is moving from right to left and then left to right. So in this way, you can create both technical front as well as technical back in the same course. So this is the main principles. We need to have two different beds with different reciprocative movements of needle in opposite directions to have both technical front as well as technical back loops. Here you can see the actual how the needles are catching the yarn and they are placed in two different beds. So if you see the bed number one, you can see here there is three needles being placed. If you see bed number two, again you can see there are three needles being placed and the nature of movement of these needles are quite opposite. So if you are standing here, 
naturally if you see these three needles it is catching the loop and bringing to your side. So, these three loops they are actually creating technical front side, but if you see these three needles they are catching the loop and going away from you. So, towards the back side. So, that is why these three loops are creating technical back loops. So, in the same course the bed number 1 the needles with respect to standing position of the observer the bed number 1 is creating technical back loops and bed number 2 are creating technical front loops and these two beds are simultaneously in operation for creating both technical front and back loops. So, this is how the principle of double jersey formation takes place in a double bed machines. Now, uh, let us see the technologies which is being introduced in case of double bed machine. The most popular machine which is used in double bed weft knitting is V bed machine, especially in the case of flat category. This particular machine is the most popular even if you can say the single bed is not being used so much, but V bed machine is the majority of stake rely on this V bed machine. So, we are going to understand this particular machine in detail because this is uh, very important from market point of view. So, if you see V bed machine this is the actual photo of the machine you can see there are two beds the back bed and the front bed you can say either this bed as a front or this as a back it depends on which side you are standing. So, this is the front bed and this is the back bed. The nature of placement of needles on these beds are again similar to the single bed where you create tricks or the slot and in each slot you place one needle side by side. So, on front bed also there are lot of tricks that is being generated and on each tricks you can place one needle. Similarly, on the back bed uh, the tricks are there which is not visible uh, from this side, but you can see here the tricks are being there and the needle butt you can easily see. So, they are being placed on both the beds. So, there are two beds and these two beds uh, contains needles uh, according to their um, uh, similar to the nature of single bed. Uh, here is the needle movement if you will try to observe the movement of needle it is quite similar uh, the nature of movement of uh, this needle the amount of reaching the reciprocative movements or the amount of reciprocative movement by bed number front bed and the back bed will remain same the only difference is they are moving in opposite directions. So, let us see this video. So, you can see here the this front bed needle is moving from right to left and left bed needle is moving from left to right. So, this is how needles movement is taking place in both the beds. Again you see if you are working with multiple number of needles the same nature you can observe. So, here I am selecting four needles. So, you can see here. So, all four needles on the front bed is moving from right to left and on the left bed they are moving from left to right. So, the key point here is the movement of these needles are opposite to each other and they are uh, controlled by their cam jacket which is uh, responsible for creating reciprocative movements of that particular bed. So, we need two cam jacket for operating each individual needles of each bed. You might have observed that when these two needles was going up um, both the needles simultaneously they are not striking each other. So, uh, there are two features which is very important in terms of needle placement on a V bed machine. The first feature is these two beds are not placed in a horizontal plane they are placed in a certain vertical plane you can see here they are placed in a different plane they are not placed on a same horizontal plane. So, the nature of their placements results a kind of V shape. So, you can see here this looks like a V shape. So, that is why this type of machine is called V bed machine. So, the, uh, the first thing is both beds are placed in a V shape and the angle between the two sides of V's are usually 90 degree. So, 90 degree inclination with each other. The second thing to avoid collision 
you, you might have seen here to avoid collision between the needles because both the needles are rising simultaneously of each bed. So, to avoid collision the placement of needles on this bed and the back bed front and back bed they are actually offset laterally by half pitch. What do you mean by that? Like if you, if you take the top view of this particular bed, so all the needles on the front bed it will look like this, but if you see the back bed the needles will be also placed in a parallel fashion, but the entire back bed is shifted by half pitch and we have already introduced you the pitch, pitch is actually the distance between two consecutive needles of a single bed. So, the pitch here you can see this is the distance between two needles on the front bed and half of this distance the back bed is shifted laterally. So, this is how when this particular needle is going away from the bed it is not actually facing the back bed needle. So, it is not striking. So, each front needle and back needle is actually operating between two opposite bed needles. So, this is how the placement is being done in case of V bed machine. How it catches the yarn? You can see here. So, we are providing the yarn through a feeder. The feeder is actually in the center and you can see here how both the beds are catching the yarn. So, you can see here the needles they start catching the yarn. This is how they catch the yarn and they create loops. Okay. So, if you see the actually the yarn is being supplied from left to right, if you say this is the left side and the other side is the right side. So, yarn is first supplied to the front bed needle and then back bed is catching the yarn, then again front bed is catching the yarn and then again back bed needle is catching the yarn. So, the yarn is being supplied from front to back and then back to front in the sequence. Now, let us move to the fabric formation part, how the fabric is actually being formed. This is the, uh, if you take the side view, uh, the entire bed will look like this. So, the back bed needle is uh, doing the movement along this direction, along this particular line. The front bed needle is doing the reciprocative movements along this direction and the fabric is being formed at the center of the bed. So, you can see here this is how it is catching the yarn and you can see the fabric is being hanging from the center of the bed. You can see the fabric is hanging here. So, this is the front bed, this is the back bed and the fabric is being formed exactly at the center of the beds at the bottom side. So, this bed is creating technical front side and this bed is creating the opposite loops which is the technical back side. Okay. To operate two different beds naturally we need two different cam system and each cam system will be responsible for needle movement in that particular bed. So, you have front bed, you have a back bed. So, you need two cam jacket, cam jacket 1, this particular cam jacket which is shown in the figure is for front bed and the other cam jacket for back bed. So, you have, you might have uh, seen the cam jacket for a single bed machines in week 2. So, the nature of these cam jacket is exactly same, they are actually interacting with the butt of the needle and providing reciprocative movements to the individual needles of that particular bed. So, since it has two needle beds, so we need to have two different cam system each for one bed which is shown here. You can again here you can see how uh, this cam jacket is responsible for reciprocative movement. So, here I have selected this much needle on the back side and here I am selected this much needle on the front side. So, once you traverse this cam jacket. So, the, the, the moment this cam jacket interacts with this needles, all the needles is rising 
And similarly, when this cam jacket is interacting with the needle butt, the needles of this particular bed are rising. So, the nature of movement is exactly similar uh, to the single bed machines, one cam jacket and one set of needles, they will be moving in exactly same direction. Since the cam jacket and the beds are placed oppositely, opposite to each other, so that is why the nature of movement of needles are also opposite for both the beds. So, now let us see the CAM profile, uh, in week 2 also uh, we have already given lot of emphasis on the CAM path which the needle butt has to follow. So, if you reverse this particular CAM jacket, if you flip it down, uh, it consists of a series of metallic blocks which is placed in a certain order to create a CAM track and the needle butt has to follow that CAM track to do the reciprocative movement. So, the this is how the moment you flip this particular any one of these cam jacket, the metallic blocks will look like this and each metallic blocks is called a cam. The placement of these cams actually creates a kind of path for needle movement. So, the butt actually follows this path. So, you can see here this is the free space and the needle butt actually follows this track. So, this track is called cam track. So, this is the movement of needles along this track. The nature is almost similar, so that it can do the clearing, then it can catch the yarn, then it can pull the yarn and then it can release the old loop. So, the loop formation sequence is exactly same in this case of machine also and this is how they are, these cams are being placed, so that each uh, process of loop formation takes place in a sequential order, starting from loop clearing, old loop clearing, then catching the new yarn, then pulling, then knocking and then loop formation. It is similar to the uh, loop formation on single bed. So, I am not going in details in that, I hope you can revise the lectures of week 2 and then you can understand the uh, movement of needles in loop formations. Now, let us see actually the position of each of these blocks and what are they called. So, if the needle butt is moving from left to right, uh, actually the needle butt is not moving, rather uh, you can say when the when this cam jacket is moving on the bed from right to left, then the butt has to follow this particular path. So, the moment butt strikes with this, it starts rising. So, this particular cam is called rising cam because it will force the needle butt to rise. After that, you can see here it will strike this particular cam. At this particular cam is called clearing cam. So, at this location, the old loop will be cleared from the head and latch interaction of the latch needle. After that, it will reach to highest position. At this position, it will be ready to catch the yarn and after that, it, it is going to strike this particular cams, you can see here and because of that, the path of the needle start going down and the moment it strikes this particular cam, it forces the needle birds to go down. The upper one is a guard cam, so that to protect the needle but not to go too far from the bed. After that, it is striking this fourth number cam, which is the stitch cam, which I have already mentioned earlier. So, a stitch cam responsible is like it is forcing the needle to go inside the bed. So, during that process, two, three loop formation process uh, takes place simultaneously. The first thing is it is pulling the yarn, simultaneously it, the old loop is closing the latch, simultaneously the old loop, once the loop get closed and old loops reaches to the head part, it knocks out from the needle. After that, it actually descend further to create the head and the leg part of the new loop. So, the stitch cam is responsible for that and all this downward movement is decided by the setting of this stitch cam. And you can see here there is a slot, so you can adjust the position of this stitch cam to decide the amount of downward movements. After that, uh, this particular cam is also called the up throw cam. So, again uh, the same 5 cams which we already have seen in case of 
flat bed machines these five camps are still there and actively participates in loop formation process. If you reverse the process, if the cam jacket is moving from left to right, the needle has to rise like this. So, the path is created like this, first it will hit here, so this become then rising cam and then it will hit here to rise again, this become the clearing cam, the, the guard, position of guard cam remains same, it is just guarding the needle butt to follow this path. After that, it is striking this particular cam which can be adjusted, so this is the fourth one is the stitch cam and after that this fifth one um, is just the up throw cam. So, this is how the cam profile of a V bed machine is decided. So, since V bed has two beds, so each of these beds has almost similar type of cam profile. Now, let us move to another category of double bed technologies related to flat bed machines uh, which is called pearl knitting machines. So, in pearl knitting machine, uh, it is not that much popular because uh, nowadays almost V bed machines is so flexible and so powerful that you can create almost any design. So, pearl knitting machine is also one of the categories which was used uh, but not that much popular nowadays. So, let us see um, what actually how the needles moves in this particular machine. So, in pearl knitting machines, uh, a different scenario may exist uh, in case of fabric nature. So, if you see this particular fabric, the grey loops are actually being formed on the back side and then white loops are being formed on the front side. So, technical back and technical front there are two different courses um, is actually appearing on the fabric surface. Compared to the previous double jersey fabrics where we have seen that in the same course the technical back and front was present, but here instead in the same course alternating course are giving technical back and front loops. For example, here the first course provides technical front and then technical back and then technical front and technical back. So, to create this kind of uh, fabric structure, a different kind of machines is being used which is uh, pearl knitting machines. In pearl knitting machines also, there are two different beds. So, first bed and two beds you can see here and to create this type of fabrics, we use double headed latch needles. So, these are the double headed latch needles. So, these latch needles actually create loops one at a time in one bed. So, for example, if it is creating loops on this particular bed, then the other bed is not operational. After that, the loop is being created on the first bed, the second bed uh, that particular needle is shifted to the other bed and that bed is actually operational to create other set of loops. So, needle actually move from one bed to another bed in alternate courses. So, this type of machines also have two different beds, but needle set is just one. So, at a particular course development, only one bed is used. Once the operation of that particular bed is done, that set of needle is transferred to the other bed to create opposite set of the loops. This is how we created technical back and front loops in alternate courses. Let us see the actually step by movement of this particular nature of the machine. So, here you can see here the this is the front bed and this is the back bed. If you see this particular bed at present, one of the head of this double sided needle is catching the yarn. So, they it has created loop towards observer side. So, if observer is standing on the right side, so, it is actually created the loops on this side. Since all the needles are there on this particular bed, this bed is not having any needles. In one particular course, this particular set of loops is being formed. After that, once this is done, this latch or you can see this jack is actually pushed because of that, this needle shifted from one bed to other bed. During this shifting process, what will happen? automatically during the shifting process, this old loop 
actually gets clear from the head of the needle. So, at present this is stick with the head of the needle, after that you can see this old loops comes out from the latch and hook position. Okay? And also you can see the needle is getting shifted to other side of the bed. So, once this particular needle releases this need this particular double sided latch needle, the other bed is actually carrying the latch needles and doing its reciprocative movements. So, during this leftward movement, the other side hook is actually catching the yarn and the old loop is getting knocked out from the other side of the needle. The loop formation process is like this, first the loop is created by the one side of the head and it is actually getting cleared from the other side of the head during the transfer process. So, if you see this animations, you will be able to understand. So, now the loop is getting cleared from the other side and so you can see here first the loop clear and then from the other side it is actually being knocked out and during this process the loop is being formed on the left side of the needle. Okay. Uh, this is the actual working of the machine, you can see here uh, there are two beds and this jack is there. So, this jack is actually help uh, used to displace the needle from one bed to other bed. So, let us see how it works. So, first uh, the loop is being formed on one of the bed, after that, that the entire needle is being pushed by this jack to the other bed and then loops is created. Once the loop is being created, then from this bed the needle is transferred by pushing these jacks. So, these jacks is being pushed so that the needle goes to the other side of the bed. Now, the other bed is creating the loops. Again, once this bed is created the loop, from this bed we are transferring the needle to the opposite bed and this process is repeated to create technical back and front loops in alternating courses. Okay. So, now let us summarize what we learned in this particular lecture and this lecture is all about development of double jersey fabrics on double bed flat knitting machines. Case of double bed flat knitting machines we come across two type of technologies, one is V bed knitting machines and the other one is purl knitting machine. So, in V bed knitting machine in the same course you are making technical back and front loops simultaneously, for that you need two different beds and there are two set of needles and if the front bed is creating technical front loops, back bed is creating technical back loops simultaneously and you need two cam jacket. In case of pearl needle, you have two beds, but there is just one set of needles which has two hook and two latch. So, if this particular needle is just on one bed, it, it will create one set of technical loops either front or back. Once that hook part is done, then that needles is transferred to the opposite bed and opposite hook and latch gets operational. So, in this way, in the double bed machines, although it has single set of needles, the needles are actually transferred from in alternating courses to create technical back and front loops in individual beds. So, this is all about V bed and pearl knitting machines which belongs to double bed flat knitting categories. In the next lecture, we are going to learn about double bed circular knitting machines to create these types of fabric structures. Similar to the single bed, you have seen single flat bed and single cylinder circular bed. Similarly, here also there is a possibilities to create double bed circular knitting machines where you can have two sets of needles placed in a circular fashion to create double jersey fabrics. So, in next class we are going to learn about this, stay tuned, uh, thank you very much for listening, thank you. Thank <laughs> you.